Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel with the Fan TV back at you another video, man. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who subscribed to the channel yesterday. I really appreciate it. Push me back, push me past, excuse me, 900 subscribers. Now on the way to 1,000. So thank you guys for uh, subscribing to the channel. And if you're new here, uh, go ahead and subscribe, man. We're going to have content keep coming, all right? So Mike Andrews did an interview with Chris Sims. You know, he's down there in Arizona doing Super Bowl Media Week and you know, he's making the rounds like a lot of NFL players do, right? And he commented on the Ravens' new search, or sorry, Ravens' continued search for a new offensive coordinator, right? And this is what he had to say, okay? All right, this is such a pass-happy league. If you're not doing it, you're going to fall behind. He also continued to say that they need to change the narrative that Baltimore isn't a great place for the wide receiver to flourish, and this right here are two very important, impactful statements coming from one of the star players on the offense, right? Now, if Mark Andrews can see that the Ravens need to go in a different direction as far as expanding the pass game, getting the wide receivers more involved, actually putting the emphasis on the wide receivers in the passing game, you would hope that, you know, John Harbaugh, Eric DeCosta, they see it as well, right? And for, the, for me, these comments come at a very, very important time, Right? The Ravens are in the process of getting through their second interview. So, you know, we've heard about, um, you know, Todd Munkin. We've heard about Brian Angela Chino. We've heard about, um, you know, but the potential of a guy like Eric Bieniemy. You know, one, the Ravens might want to interview him. So this is, comes at a very important time. And Mark Andrews knows that this is a passing league in the NFL. The rules are set up for you to pass the ball. And the Ravens, especially under Greg Roman, did not take advantage of these rules. They, did, they just didn't. Not to their fullest potential. Now, I would say that in 2021, when the running backs went down and the Ravens actually were forced to expand and open up the offense, they passed the ball fairly well. Uh, you know, that's, you know, that's when Lamar Jackson had the great comeback versus the Colts. And even though they lost the game versus the Raiders, he was really, really good in that game over the season. But he had a lot of games that year where um, I think he was very sharp in the passing game. Now, he kind of tailed off a little bit, tried to force some things, but, you know, it happens, right? Now... Uh, that season, the Ravens were about 55, 45 as far as uh, pass run percentage, and that was good, you know. So coming into this season, we thought that we might see some more of that, but no, they kind of went back into their old ways and ended up passing the ball, I believe, around 30th in the NFL times of uh, passing percentage, okay? So they went from being in the middle of the pack 2021 to all the way back down at the bottom last year, this past season, okay? Now, Mike Andrews realizes the fact that you can't do that. You can have a run game and still throw the football. You know, Ravens too much played like it was an either-or situation, okay? Now, if you look at the teams that are in the Super Bowl currently playing right now, they are teams that can pass the football. Now, you're going to say the Eagles, right? The Eagles have a great run game, great run scheme. Of course they do with Jalen Hurts back there. But Jalen Hurts also has thrown the ball really, really well this year. When Jalen Hurts went out, Garden Mistry came in the game and threw the ball really well this year. They put an emphasis on the wide receiver position. They drafted Devontae Smith. When they, instead of just saying, hey, look, we got our wide receiver one. He had a really, really good rookie year. We think he's the guy. No, they went out and traded and got A.J. Brown. Now, I'm not saying the Ravens need to trade a first-round draft pick to get a wide receiver. But I am saying the Ravens need to put that same kind of emphasis on it so that they can expand the position and really show that, excuse me, that, that the, the Ravens care about wide receiver. And this issue with the Ravens is even bigger than just firing Greg Roman, okay? The Ravens have really never really put an emphasis on wide receivers as far as it, getting the young, talented wide receivers. They, they, did, they just really haven't done it in this team's history. Now, I remember when I was younger and the Ravens fan, you know, we would get the old veteran guy. And there's nothing wrong with that to a certain extent if you're pairing him with, you know, studs, uh, young studs. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times the Ravens would just get the guy that maybe was on his third contract Hey, look, you're, you're the guy down here, right? So if the Ravens want to truly make a change, yes, you can get that old veteran guy, which is no problem. You got, you got Keenan Allen. You got DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, well, Mike Evans is not old. He's like 29. But you got Mike Evans, Michael Thomas. There are guys that's options out there of guys who you can get, right? That's fine. You can go ahead and do that. But make sure you also go in the draft and get a high-ranking wide receiver. All right now, the Ravens obviously need help at other spots. They, they, of course, they do, but they have to get this wide receiver position filled out. They, they, they just have to. Okay, um, so when I saw Mike Andrews make these comments, uh, it had to be music to my ear. It was music to my ears, and it had to be music to the uh, Ravens fans' ears as well. To see a player on a team realize that, hey, look, man, what's going on around the league is not exactly what's going on here. 
And the Ravens don't have to change everything. All right. Now, listen, they drafted a guy like Isaiah Likely, right? Um, you can still run multiple tight end sets to have Isaiah Likely on the field in the offense that uses him to his strengths. You can still do that. All right. The Eagles use multiple tight ends. The Chiefs you do use multiple tight ends. They have, uh, I think his name is Daniel Fortson. They have, um, I think his name is Noah Gray. Obviously, they have Travis Kelsey. They use multiple tight ends. They also get their wide receivers in space, okay? Um, you go back to teams who was, who was playing in the championship games. Uh, the Bengals don't really use multiple tight ends that much, but the 49ers definitely use multiple tight ends. So there's still a way for the Ravens to still be who they want to be and get updated and get uh, advanced as far as this is 2023. We need to pass the ball more. We need to be more uh, expansive and more creative in our in our pass games and make the wide receivers feel like they're a part of the offense, right? Now, last year when Rashad Bateman was healthy, right in the beginning of the season, um, to you know early mid part of the season, whatever, there were games, multiple games, where Rashad Bateman was only killing the field 60, 65 percent of the snaps, and this is your guy who's your wide receiver one, right? That shouldn't happen. He should be on the field 75, 80 percent plus of the snaps, right? The Eagles, like I said, run first, uh, very, very run heavy kind of offense. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith played 80 percent of the snaps. They they rarely come off the field. So when I saw Mark Andrews say this, um, it, met, it let me know that, hey, these guys realize what's going on. Obviously, they're smart. They're, they're not they're not stupid or anything like that. So. Um, hopefully this means that in the, in the coaching search that these guys have some input, right? That a guy like Mark Andrews can reach out to the Costa, can reach out to John Harbaugh and give his opinion on what kind of offense he wants to be in, what kind of offense he likes. Cause listen, this, this the offense that he was in for, uh, with Greg Roman, obviously it benefited him, right? Um, he was able to get a lot of targets. He was the focal point of the offense, but he noticed that, why he was frustrated. He had to notice a guy like Marquise Brown, who he went to college with at Oklahoma. He knew Marquise Brown was frustrated with this kind of offense, right? He knew it. You know, they're, they're friends, they're boys, they're close. So it's no secret that it's not, that's not going to be like Lamar Jackson was the only person who knew Marquise Brown was frustrated. No, uh, uh, Mark, Mark Andrews probably knew as well. So the Ravens have to make an approach, uh, a, a change in the culture on offense. They have to make a shift to where they can feel like why receivers want to come here in free agency and know that, hey, look, I'm not just going to block. I, mean, I am going to get the ball. I am going to be a, a, an active part of this offense, man. I think that's a big, big thing. Honestly, I really do. He also said one more thing that's interesting, too. Um, he defended Lamar Jackson. All right. Uh, not something that's uncommon for Mark Andrews. He loves Lamar Jackson. He, he defends him. If, if, you know, anything, any slight that comes towards Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews doesn't really take that. Okay. So. Um, he said that if, if Lamar was healthy and could have played, he would have been out there. So, you know, we don't need to hear from um, anybody else on that. Honestly, Mark Andrews on the team. He says that. So that's that's cool for me to hear come out of his mouth. All right. Um, now, as far as the Ravens go in this office of coordinator search, obviously they're deep into it. They got guys coming up second interviews. Like I said, they're waiting on some guys from the uh, Eagles and the Chiefs to interview after the Super Bowl. So. We'll see in the direction that this offense is going to go in, I would say, probably in the next couple of weeks. Because you want to have, you probably want to have your offensive coordinator in place before free agency. So you know what kind of guys you want to go after, if you want to go after anybody at all. And you especially want to have it done before the draft. So I'm, I'm thinking the end of this month, maybe beginning of March, the Ravens are going to have the offensive coordinator in place. So we're going to know a lot more about the, the future and the direction of this offense going into the 2023 season. All right. Uh, so let me know your thoughts on what Mark Andrews had to say. And uh, yeah, I'm out of here, man. It's your boy Gail with another fan TV. I'm out.